God knows where Binny is. He is usually never late. Anyways, I need to start the show. Hello, friends. I am scientist Radhi Krishnan, better known as S R K, and my assistant Binny is missing. So, what do we learn today? Hmm. Usually, Binny tells me what she wants to learn, and now. I'm finding it difficult to decide. There she is. What happened, Binny? Why are you late? <sighs> oh, sorry, sir. My brother was troubling me. <sighs> you are so out of breath, Binny. Oh, I came running all the way, sir. Oh, sir, I I have a question. Sir, why do we pant more when we exercise? Didn't I tell you all? She always comes up with a good question before the show starts. So it's decided. We learn about respiration today. In this module, you learn about respiration. Just as a motor vehicle needs gas to run, we need energy to perform our daily functions. Energy is required to read, play, eat and even to sleep likewise animals and plants also need energy for living and growing can you guess from where do living beings get energy living beings get energy from the food they eat food has energy stored in the form of chemical energy binny I will answer your question at the end of the episode. But for now, from what you just learnt, do you have doubts? Yes. How can air be a fuel, sir? And do we have a combustion engine within us, like uh, cars do? Well, not a combustion engine, Binny. Our body is far more sophisticated machine than a car. I am sure your mother would have told you to eat well to be more energetic. Yes, sir. That's what I was wondering. We get energy because of food, and now you say that we generate energy because of the air we breathe. I'm totally confused. Doesn't matter, Binny. Let's enter the virtual world to understand what I'm trying to explain. The chemical energy of food needs to be unlocked in the body cells of organisms. How is this achieved? By body process called respiration, which takes place in the cells of our bodies. Respiration, in its simplest sense, can be defined as a process by which living organisms burn food to produce energy. Thus, cellular respiration is important energy change. Chemical energy stored in food through respiration tends to energy for organisms. The process of respiration occurs all the time. It never stops. Why? Because living beings need a constant supply of energy for different activities and body processes. Hmm. So, I was panting because I had less oxygen in my body. So, in a way, this food we eat would be no good without the oxygen we breathe. Also, I was wondering if plants also pant in case of lack of oxygen. That was quite imaginative, Binny. Yes, you were panting because of the lack of oxygen. But Binny, we do generate energy without oxygen too. That is, when we do vigorous exercise and the amount of oxygen in our body is less. That's when we appear to pant or breathless. But that happens for a very short period of time. What about panting in plants? We do not generally say that plants also pant, as they do not undertake any rigorous physical activity. But in case of lack of air supply for long, the plant may dry up and eventually die. But you know, Binny, the amount of energy produced in the absence of oxygen is much lesser. Than that produced in the presence of oxygen. Absence of oxygen and a presence of oxygen. Oh, wait, sir! I'm totally confused. 
Wait, let's enter the virtual world again to understand the difference between the respiration that takes place in the presence of air and the kind that takes place in the absence of air. There are two basic types of cellular respiration, aerobic and anaerobic. Let's first take up aerobic respiration. The word aerobic stands for involving air or oxygen. You can now easily guess what aerobic respiration means. It is the respiration that takes place in the presence of oxygen. In aerobic respiration, food and glucose combines with oxygen to release energy needed by a cell. Respiration sometimes occurs without oxygen, as in the case of bacteria and yeast. This is called anaerobic respiration. In this case, glucose is only partially broken down and lactic acid is produced together with a much smaller amount of energy. Hmm, now I get it. Uh, sir, do the cramps I get after a rigorous badminton match because of the production of lactic acid? Quite right, Binny. Another thing, Binny, fermentation happens because of anaerobic respiration. The baking industry uses carbon dioxide released by yeast cells in alcoholic fermentation in raising the dough and making bread spongy. So you see how important anaerobic respiration is in our lives. Yes, sir. I cannot imagine my world without cakes. True, Binny. I have an activity planned for you all. Are you up for it? Of course, sir. I love activities. For the activity we need, glucose, oil, water, two flasks, glass tubes, stoppers, lime water, a burner and yeast. Now we are going to see how anaerobic respiration takes place. Start with boiling water to remove all the dissolved oxygen. Now, fill the two flasks with water up to the rim and seal them to prevent oxygen from entering. Allow the water to cool and then add glucose to each flask. Then add yeast to the first flask and no yeast in the second flask. Pour oil to each flask. A thin layer of oil on water surface prevents contact with air. Insert a thin glass tube from each stoppered flask into test tube containing lime water. Now what do you see, Binny? Um, I notice that no change takes place in the test tube containing lime water connected to the second flask. But in the first flask, bubbles of colourless gas escape from the flask and turn lime water milky. This shows that the gas is carbon dioxide. This means that the yeast has produced carbon dioxide in the absence of oxygen and therefore yeast has respired anaerobically. Wow! I love the activities you make us do, sir. I know that, Binny. There is more that I know that you would want to know. So let's enter the next segment. Binny, do you know that while we cannot live without oxygen, some living beings cannot live in the presence of oxygen? Is that true, sir? Yes, my girl. There are anaerobes or animals that breathe anaerobically called obligate anaerobes. Two of these are bacteroids and clostridium. Let's take a deep breath now and let's do the recap, Binny. In this module, you've learnt the following. Animals and plants need energy to live and grow. Food has energy stored in it in the form of chemical energy. The chemical energy of food is unlocked in the body cells by respiration. Respiration is of two types, aerobic and anaerobic. In aerobic respiration, glucose combines with oxygen to release energy. Carbon dioxide and water are the byproducts. 
anaerobic respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen. In this, glucose is partially broken down and lactic acid is produced. The amount of energy released during aerobic respiration is much more than that released during anaerobic respiration. I can see from your expression that you have a question, Bini. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Um, how do plants breathe in water? See, one of the properties of oxygen is that it gets partially dissolved in water. So, organisms that live in water use this dissolved oxygen to survive. The source for dissolved oxygen is from the direct absorption from the atmosphere and released during photosynthesis by aquatic plants. Hmm, interesting. That's enough for the day, so all of you can take a deep breath and meet us next time on Science for Juniors.